Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Jerry again, and Joy, my wife. And we're here again today to continue our uh, study of Proverbs in God's Word, which is a can be a very long study, but it will be because there's so much information in Proverbs. But today we're going to read from uh, Proverbs 2. Last week we read from Proverbs 1 to introduce this whole uh, study. But in Proverbs 2, it actually starts into the actual study of Proverbs and what it says and how it relates to our life. And in Proverbs 2, it talks about, I think, as our problem with America today, and we'll get into that as soon as we read this, but anyway, uh, I'm going to start out reading Proverbs 2, chapter 1 through 15 verses. In the King James Version. In the King James Version. Remember, we always read it from two different versions. Right. <clears throat> chapter 2 starts out, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear into wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up my voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the paths of the ways of darkness, who rejoices to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. Now, George's going to read this out. Well, there's some talk. of that King James talking. <laughs> I said, What the heck does froward mean, Jerry? <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> we wrote it down. Difficult to deal with or contrary, actually, to God's word. <laughs> What the forward For forward. I thought at first it was spelled wrong. We said they don't even know how to spell forward, Gary. That's <laughs> forward, Joy. You're going to like the living version much better. I do. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. And of course, you all read the rest of it. The, the rest of it's about prostitutes. I don't think any of you are having problems with prostitution. Well, not only that, it's against. Yes. <laughs> Pornography and other things. Yeah, true, 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 true. Not just prostitutes. That's true. I mean, I guess they had pornography back then. They just had a lot of prostitutes wandering around. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Every young man who listens to me and obeys my instructions will be given wisdom and good sense. And let me put my glasses on. Ah, this is such tiny print in this Bible. Yes. If you want better insight and discernment and are searching for them as you would for lost money or hidden treasure, then wisdom will be given you and knowledge of God himself. You will soon learn the importance of reverence for the Lord and of trusting him. For the Lord grants wisdom. His every word is a treasure of knowledge and understanding. He grants good sense to the godly, his saints. He is their shield, protecting them and guarding their pathway. He shows how to distinguish right from wrong, how to find the right decision every time. For wisdom and truth will enter the very center of your being, filling your life with joy. 
you will be given the sense to stay away from evil men who want you to be their partners in crime. Men who turn from God's ways to walk down dark and evil paths and exult in doing wrong, for they thoroughly enjoy their sins. Everything they do is crooked and wrong. Oh my goodness. Everybody needs to blow this up in giant letters and put it on a huge poster and hang it on the wall in their children's rooms the whole time they're growing up. In my humble opinion. <laughs> well, it's, that's the parent's responsibility for your children to teach them about this kind of thing. You know, because honestly, uh, in America today, this country is headed towards some very, very perilous times. And some way, somehow, you got to figure out how to survive in those perilous times, because those perilous times are here. They're here. And if you haven't seen that by now, you must be living under a rock somewhere or something, oblivious to what's going on. And to expound on that, I will say that a lot of people are really oblivious to what's going on. So many bad things are happening in America today. It's because we in America, not necessarily the saints in America, but, but the ungodly, the ungodly, yeah, are trying very desperately to take over this country, to destroy it. What they want to do is to take God away from America totally, right. completely. They hate God. They hate the Bible. They hate anybody telling them what they're doing is wrong. They don't want anybody telling them, hey, these are the decisions you make, should make that are right. Your thinking is wrong, your decisions are wrong, your actions are wrong. They don't want anybody telling them that. So they just want to do, do away with God altogether. And we, as the godly, who do honor God, must know these scriptures so God can teach us, right? Oh, so yeah. we, you and me, will know. I'll tell you this, you'll never stop learning, okay? <laughs> you can read the Bible a hundred times and there will still be things in there that you miss. People have not read God's Word. People do not put any substance in God's Word. Yeah. They ignore God's Word and this is why elections are lost for godly people because the the majority of the people in this country have completely forgotten about God and they just follow their own ways and they don't strive to go into God's Word and learn how to live a righteous life right. and can see with an open mind what's going on in the schools in America, in the public places in America. The government right now is headed down the wrong paths, according to God's word. Very true. If you don't believe that, just look around you. Take an honest, honest look around you uh, in the schools in America, how they're training our children in the wrong and evil yeah. ways of this to world. To hate America, to hate And you can life. see it come to fruition. Yeah. They are uh, not forcing drugs upon people, but they're making drugs much more feasible oh. for people to obtain. They're not even illegal anymore. They're not even, well, they might even be illegal. Not on the people living in the streets. I the realize tents. that. They're, they're even helping help, them They're even them. helping people to stay yeah, on we those We talked drugs, about that last week. It's just shocking. Which totally, completely destroys their ability to... To think. ...comprehend what's going on. And you can see it in the situation concerning cannabis, especially in Oklahoma and other places like that. Mm -hmm. You can see a, a, an influx of drug abuse in America, which has been going on for years and years. And you're now beginning to see the fruition of that. And it's totally against what God teaches. It's at its peak. Yeah, it's just it's ridiculous. Terrible. But some way, somehow, we got to get back or we're going to lose this battle. Yeah. And the way you do that is concentrate on God's Word. Yeah. You know, and spend time in His Word and learn. Well, and know it in case 
well, not even in case. God will put you somewhere for a ministry. He will put you somewhere. It might be the grocery store. It might be the post office. It might be the yard people that come. But all of us are to teach other people. Now, you can't just go up and beat them over the head and say, you're going to listen to me and you're going to quit doing this and quit doing that. But I have found that these, even these people that come out here to mow our lawn, and some of them, I mean, you're, if they have one tooth in their head, and they're smoking a cigarette, and they're covered with tattoos, and you can tell they're poor as Job's turkey. But you know they are friendly, they are respectful, and you can talk to them. And I can always somehow get God into the conversation. And it's just amazing. If you, you know, you can't teach anybody anything about the Bible if you don't know it. That's true. So we well, have to learn it. Or Jerry, Jerry will talk about it for days if you'll listen to him. He will just, he, you know, our business was sick people. Yeah. And Jerry, it was Jerry's ministry. Now, there was a lot of times he'd go into someone's home and, and God would not open it up to where he could help someone or bless someone or talk about the word or pray for them. But other times the Lord would open up an opportunity. Yeah. Tell them, give them an instance. Well, you know, I mean, it's just the Holy Spirit just leads you. First of all, you have to recognize that the Holy Spirit's even talking to you, you know. I mean, it's just, it's your conscience is what it is. Yeah. You know, the Holy Spirit speaks to you through your conscience, you know, and He tells you right from wrong and those kind of things. You know, if you have any sense at all of the Word, what's right and what's wrong. And But in, in those situations, uh, there were homes I could go into where I could actually pray for the child or something that was uh, debilitated or whatever, or just things would come up, you know, to where I just felt comfortable doing that. You can't just go in there and start yeah. preaching to people because that turns a lot of people off, and that's really not the way to minister to someone anyway. But God will give you opportunities. Yeah, it will come up, and you just take advantage of that opportunity, and sometimes I did, and sometimes I just... Yeah. failed and didn't do it and I kicked myself every time and I thought about well, it. Well you never forced it on anyone. I never forced it and you cannot do that because But for instance if he would go in and these little children are very very crippled it's extremely sad and maybe the young mother would say to Jerry um, I've been praying or I've been reading my Bible or I've been wondering if God can and you know just say something to where Jerry would know aha. <laughs> But, you know, you can teach healing to people about that. And you don't have to pray for them for healing. Just teach them how to receive yeah. their healing. Just give them a short, short uh, sentence like, you've already been healed by Christ at the cross, and you just have to learn how to receive your healing. You know, it's things like that, because a lot of people don't understand no. that. But, you know, you go into His Word and you begin to learn you know, how these things happen. And this is how people get healed. You can't force a prayer for healing upon someone. That's you never going to work. They're never going to be anyone. healed that way. They yeah. have to want to be healed, you know. And the Holy Spirit will just lead you in those things. And there are other homes I go into, and it just wasn't, you know, just wasn't there. Oh, no, the people were very, very evil. One man had a gun right there next to him. <laughs> and you see this gun right here? Yeah. He actually pushed Jerry out of his house because yeah, yeah. Jerry wouldn't illegally yeah. get him what he wanted. Yeah, yeah, so he went into a lot of homes full of devils. Uh, but there were lots of times the sick child and, the, and no daddy and the mama would be, you know, a very loving, wonderful mother and want to know, you know, can you pray or... Yeah, you know. And so things opened up. But I'm just saying it all comes down to teaching people how to learn about God. Yeah. Because that's where your salvation comes from. That's where your, you know, it states in here that uh, God will be the buckler for them. In other words, the, the individual who, not, not an individual, but the entity that, that battles for you, okay? And, this battle we're in in America is not between uh, men against men. It's a battle that's taking place in uh, heaven. Yeah. Uh, it's by uh, 
spiritual entities in heaven that are battling against Evil each other. Spirits. Evil against principalities, good. powers, rulers of darkness. Principalities and powers That's in high right. places is where the battle is really taking place. And they have made great, great progress after these yeah. ungodly people have gotten high positions in government. Yeah, and so, that's because of us. Because well, you need, I didn't vote for them. I realize that, but I'm talking about <laughs> America as a whole have been deceived. Yeah. Okay? To trust and, evil. Yeah, and it mainly comes from the media that we listen to on television today and the government of the United States and the people that are in power in the United States. But those people can be kicked out of power, you know, and it's through prayer, okay, of righteous Christian people that that gets done. All you got to do is stand up against it in prayer and let God do the heavy work. All you got to do is learn about God, trust in Him, be as righteous as you can be, and live a righteous, godly life, and teach your children the same thing. Teach children, teach your children, teach, teach children, your children, teach children. Because but then they're again, being, they're being then taught. Again, yeah. Children have been stolen away from godly parents by the millions. They've gone to colleges who have turned them into completely different people than they were raised to be. And they've just decided life is all about getting anything they want and not letting anybody tell you what to do. And they worship trees and grass and whales and eagles and dear Lord, how many things you're not allowed to kill. Or you, you can go to jail for killing some animal. We've got vultures on our roof. I told Jerry, shoot them. The neighbor said you can't. It's against the law. <laughs> what? What? But you can murder a baby. <laughs> A perfectly healthy, beating heart, fully developed brain, fully developed lungs. You can kill that, but you can't kill the vultures. It's a sick world, my friends, and I hope that you, being Christians, or you going to be listening to us to start with, will join with us praying for our nation before we lose it completely. We must come back to honoring God and Jesus and making them head of our homes, head of our lives, and begging them for wisdom in all of the choices that we make. So, when you're looking at these people on TV telling you that this is happening and that's happening and we needed this and we needed that, you can look at that and hear it and say, no, no, that's not Bible, that's wrong. You should not be doing that, you should not be a leader of this Christian country, and you need to be gotten rid of. That's what Proverbs is telling us here make wise choices and how do you make them you ask god for wisdom and he will give you extreme discernment and decision making ability oh my gosh i i just need it so desperately sometimes you think you hear from god and usually in my case it'll be i feel like i'm supposed to do something but i don't want to do it and then it'll come back to me again you need to do this and I'll say, no, I don't want to do that. And the next day they come back to me again. Well, no, I don't want to do that. That's not going to work out. That's not going to work. And then the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and I'm like, I told Jerry, I said, the Lord must be telling me to do this. It's coming to me every day. And so then you do it, but then you can't see a result from it. You can't see a good result. You can't see a bad result. You can't see any result, but you feel like you've done what the Lord asked you to do and followed through with it. So, I'm not saying, and Jerry's not saying, hey, this is easy. <laughs> You're never going to make a mistake. You're always going to do the right thing from here on. But we have to trust that God will make us much better at it than we are without him. That's for sure. Because you honestly don't have the power to overcome this by yourself. No. There's no way no. That God has to do that. But, and like it says in here, and I'll read this over again. Uh, this is chapter uh, 2, verse 5 through basically the end of this. And then it says, uh, Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. Yeah. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. That's what I said a while ago. He's yeah. the one that protects you. He's the one that keeps you going. He's yeah. the one that, uh, you know, preserves you through this whole mess. 
He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Yeah. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Yes. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things. And that, it's all right there in those few verses, you know. This is why you try and strive for wisdom. You try to learn from God's Word because it's the only way that we're going to survive. Yeah, it's going to take the Holy Spirit to give us boldness, one against many. And can you stand and say, this is wrong. Don't tell me I'm a man, I'm a woman. Don't tell me it's okay to murder babies. Don't tell me that, it's wrong. But a whole room of 100 people say, we think it's our choice, we think we should be able to do it, who do you think you are to tell us what to do? Are you bold enough to stand up and say, but God says it's wrong. It takes the Holy Spirit to make us strong like that. All right, babe, we've talked for like an hour. I realize it. The abortion <laughs> issue right now is very obvious. Who's against that and who's yeah. for it? The problem, like, for example, in Kansas just recently, they voted against the banning of abortion. And that, to me, kind of I tells me... I was shocked about Kansas. That, to me, kind of tells me that the Christians in this country need to get up out of their seats or wherever they're at and go vote. I mean, that's the only power that you uh, actually We don't know who didn't, who didn't. I know it, but I'm telling you. I if mean, it's you, a you, correct count. <laughs> you, I realize that, but you've got to be bold enough to get yeah. up and go vote yeah. for the things that God wants to happen. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. That's all he asks you to do, basically, yeah. is learn about him, get on your wisdom, and then go do Honor something. Honor him and Whatever you him. can do to carry on his way is go vote. That's you know, way. you had to vote the Bible. Whatever the Bible represents to you, whatever God represents to you, you have to vote for the people that honor that. Yeah. You know, now these people may not be the most upright people in the world. They may not be perfect, they but not, are, you, are, perfect. are you? Are you? Do you know had, anybody perfect? No. You're not going to find anybody at this table. Jesus Christ was the only one who was perfect. That's right. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm saying. When elections come up, yeah. you need to go vote for these people that are that carry the torch. Vote the Bible. Yeah, vote the Bible. Vote the Bible. And this is how you get things fixed. You know, and you've also got to teach your children, you know, from yeah, the standpoint well, of what's right did. and what's wrong. We did, but there's an awful lot of influences out there. The television, number one, the movies. These advertisements will come up. Jerry and I don't watch trash on television, but um, sometimes a commercial will come up. And just what they show in the brief little commercial is so evil, so scary, so demonic, so of the occult. And I, I tell Jerry all the time, I said, this is what our children are watching. This is what they see. This is what they think is truth. This is what they watch. It's just so scary. And the families, oh, our preacher, uh, Pastor John Hagee, preached about the families today. It is so, 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 so sad how Satan has broken up families. There's no honor for parents. There's no honor for family. There's no honor for Jesus. And we could go on for days and days, but we've got to quit because I have to edit this. <laughs> I, know. I know that. So say goodbye, sideburns, and we have to come back next Sunday for Proverbs 3. Uh, we'll close it up for the day, and we bless you all, and have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Bye.